So this is from Vasari's life, uh, and it's a story of a painting that just absolutely overwhelmed the world, that just blew people out of the water. Um, and, and it's attributed to, this is still from Cimabue's life, right? So he says, he made for the church of Santa Maria Novella the panel of Our Lady that is set on high between the chapel of the Rucellai and that of the Bardi di Vernia, which work was of greater size than any figure that had been made up to that time. And certain angels that are around it show that, although he still had the Greek manner, he was going on approaching in part to the line and method of the modern. Wherefore, his work caused so great marvel to the people of that age by reason of their not having been seen up to then anything better that it was born in most solemn procession from the house of Cimabue to the church with much rejoicing and with trumpets, and he was thereby much rewarded and honored. It is said, and it may be read in certain records of old painters, that while Cimabue was painting the said panel in certain gardens, there passed through Florence King Charles the Elder of Anjou, and that among the many signs of welcome made to him by the men of this city, they brought him to see Cimabue's panel, whereupon, for the reason that it had not yet been seen by anyone, and in the showing it to the king, there flocked together to it, all the men and all the women of Florence, with the utmost rejoicing and in the greatest crowd in the world. Wherefore, by reason of the joy that the neighbors had thereby, they called that place the Borgio Allegri, which place, although enclosed in time within the walls, has ever after retained the same name. So what is this painting? I mean, this, this, this he talks about it as if it's like, you know, the, uh, 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 some sort of uh, miracle drug that cures every disease or something. I mean, imagine like, you know, carrying a painting on your shoulders through town and people weeping and, and, and following it with, with such delight, right? What could possibly, I'm not even sure I can imagine what form of, of development we could make now that, that we would do this with. Um, but in Florence, right, uh, this is supposed to be just like the, uh, you know, the thing that brings people to absolute tears, brings monarchs, much as much as, uh, you know, Alexander came to the studio of Apelles, you know, King Charles is coming to see this Madonna. Um, let's look at the painting. So again, if you're watching on YouTube or you can look it up, um, here is the Rucellai Madonna. And uh, I mean, we can definitely see what's happening here. He talked about the angels and it's the angels that that draw the attention, right? Um, because look at the bottom, at the way the feet of the angels and their knees, right, um, come out from in front of the throne, the way that their hands are kind of curling around the, the throne and just the, um, the deliverance of this like woman. It's as if they're bringing her out directly out of heaven into our lives. Um, and this is the moment when, when Christian art kind of begins to take on the full character of what it can be, because you have this notion that the divine is takes on flesh, right? And so this is kind of the theological consummation of this idea that, well, the world is made by God. There's a divine order to it. Uh, painting can kind of illuminate that order, can bring it out. Um, and now, you know, what if we could actually recreate uh, the, the forms of life, you know, in, in, in realistic detail um, and recovering some of those techniques, which again had been lost right from, from some of the Greek painters like Apelles. Um, this was like, this is why this is such a bombshell.